Okay, so for the last lesson in this unit, we're going to look at reasoning with congruent triangles. So, we're talking about congruent triangles. Each of the five triangles positioned to the right are all positioned differently, but they all have the exact same size of shape, which means that they are congruent. The diagrams below show flags of some countries in the world and some Canadian provinces. All of the flags shown have some features in common. Each flag contains three triangles, or sorry, contains triangles, which are going to be the same size. So if I state that two triangles which have the same size and are said to be congruent, the flags of American Samoa and uh, Namibia contain one pair of congruent triangles. So if I'm looking at the American Samoa, I can see that I have one is here and one is here. If I'm looking at the Nibian flag, there's a triangle here which is the exact same as the triangle down here. The flags of Scotland, Jamaica, and Nova Scotia have two pairs of congruent ones. So if I'm looking at Scotland, the top and the bottom triangles are going to be congruent, and the two side ones are going to be congruent. Same thing with Jamaica. The top and the bottom are going to be the same, and the two side ones are the same. And Nova Scotia, even though there's a crest overlapping it, there's going to be a triangle here, and a triangle here which are the same, and these two side ones are the same. Newfoundland has one set of four congruent triangles. All four of these are the same triangle. And one set of two congruent triangles. These two are the same. All right, so four congruent triangles. A triangle has three sides and three angles. Two triangles are congruent if all pairs of corresponding sides and all pairs of corresponding angles are the same. So in the diagram we can see here, triangle PQR is congruent to LMN, which means that we would write that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Note that to describe the congruent triangles, we write the corresponding angles in the same order, which means angle P is equal to angle L, angle Q is equal to angle M, angle R is equal to angle N. Also, the side length of PQ is the same as LM, QR is the same as MN, and PR is the same as LN. We do not need all six measurements in a triangle to prove that they are congruent. In the work below, we can show that in certain circumstances, only three of the measurements are required. So if I'm looking at, if I'm given all three angles, well, all three angles, even though the angles match all the way through here, the size of them is obviously different which means that that one doesn't give us enough information. In the second case, we have two side lengths and the angle that is not contained by the two, or I don't know the angle between the two, I know another angle that is not in between them, either this side, sorry, either this side or this side, not the one that's between the angles. In this case, I have two different triangles, so that's not enough information. So if I have all three sides, or sorry, all three angles, or if I have two side lengths and an angle that is not in between them, that's not enough information to prove it. If I have all three side lengths, well, if I have all three side lengths and the angles are based on the trig ratios, then the angles in here have to be set. So there is not any movement for those angles which means that this is enough information to prove it's congruent. If I know two angles and the side length that is in between them, 
then that means that I have enough information to state, well, I know what this angle would be because it all has to add up to 180, which means I can prove if it is going to work. So that's enough information. Or if I have two side lengths and the angle that is in between them, then that is enough information for me to prove that it is going to be the same. So the other case is if I have two angles and a side length that is not between the angles. In this situation, we're given two angles and a side not contained by them. We can calculate the measure of the third angle from the fact that the three angles have a sum of this and fit it into the ASA category. So if I have any two angles and one other side length, that is enough to prove it. Doesn't matter if it's in between them or not in between them, as long as I have any two angles and a side length, then I can do it. Which means that there's three possibilities. If I know three side lengths, if I know any two angles and a side length, or if I know two side lengths and the angle that is between the two side lengths, then that is enough to prove it. So if I'm putting that into practice, in each case, use the information given to determine if the triangles are congruent or not. So I have an angle X, angle X, I have this side length and this side length, and I have angle O, angle O, they're congruent. How do I know that they're congruent? Because of the angle side angle rule. That's enough information to prove they're the same. If I have these three angles match up with these three angles, is that enough? No. Three angles is not enough to prove to me that they are 100% congruent. In this case, I have this side is the same as this side, this side is the same length as this side, and this side is the same length as this side. That's going to follow under my three side lengths rule. If I have three side lengths, they're all the same, it's going to be congruent. I know that this side length is the same as this side length. I know this angle is the same as this angle. And logically speaking, I know that this side length is the same for both of them because it's actually a shared side length, which means that these are congruent because of the side angle side rule. I have two side lengths and the angle between them are going to be the same.